G'day, welcome back to the channel. So, why don't you come over here and uh, join me for a second. So as you can see, we've got a few ships over there. And uh, today we're talking Warfare 2. Now I know there's been a lot of videos about the uh, turrets that came with the update, uh, what, and other parts that did, uh, the custom turrets. Um, and I think uh, how to build custom turrets has been fairly covered. Uh, but what I haven't seen much of is uh, talking about the placing of the turrets on your ships. Now, the turrets that came with Warfare 2 are pretty good uh, in terms of how much of a beating they can take when you compare them to a uh, custom turret. Custom turrets can literally be the definition of a glass cannon. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to check out uh, how sort of best to place them to avoid them copying all that damage initially initially uh, and, you know and this is kind of uh, can be achieved with decoys but in this case I was just more thinking about the way that the ships are flown and how combat is done um, and I'll, albeit I am taking on a stationary target in this but I've done a bit of testing as you can see we've got three versions of the uh, more or less the same ship up there and uh, yeah we will go through those and check out uh, a thing or two, but first I want to cover fitting the turrets. So let's hop to some footage and I will hopefully be able to show you a thing or two um, about getting them in. If you've got tight spacing, is more what I'm talking about here. Uh, if you've got tight spacing and you want to get them into a tight spot, uh, as you can see here, then uh, you're going to want to, um, you know, make sure you've got enough clearance. And there are maybe some things that you could run into uh, that you might not have thought about. Uh, deformation being one of the major contributors to jamming up your turret in this kind of tight sitting situation. Anyway, all right, let's get out there. Okie dokie, putting them par, kiss them girls and make them cry. <laughs> okay, radio. So here we are at the ships and you can see I've actually added one in there. We'll get to that in a minute. Before we go on, why is the blue ship so vulnerable? Anyway, here we have first up on the left, the uh, freight train. Now these are all iterations on the freight train, but that was the original and it's the vehicle I have been using to test. Um, basically it's built around a solid spine using armored spacing and um, uh, runs a uh, pretty typical uh, PVP static meta and a uh, bunch of turrets um, but of course I had to cut down the ship for the, the tournament but that's not what you're here for you're here for turrets so let's get on with the custom turrets moving on to an early iteration here where I had put a small grid weapon system onto the large grid custom turret and a nice big space and you will notice if I can get lined up sorry try over here there is a very fine gap. Now I've lowered the to turret um, rotor, azimuth rotor's displacement uh, right down as far as it'll go without bumping into the body of the ship. And that sort of, you know, will help to keep your turret for a while. Uh, you know, this is why I've got the, at least attached to the ship, the main body of it. Um, and this is why I've got the wide front armor uh, to help push those hits away from that rotor underneath. Of course, the top of the turrets are always going to be quite vulnerable and uh, the major glass cannon aspect of the uh, custom turrets, although having six small rail guns like that, it is quite a nice array. Um, we will move forward and uh, talk about turret placement. But first, before I do that, I do want to cover a point that might have um, or done some people's heads in, um, and that's having your turret wobble. So it'll swing and go, oh yeah, oh, there's my target. And by the time it's found its target, it's shot like over here or over here in one of the swings. And one of the uh, ways to control this is, well, at least with the smaller correct grid turrets like that one and uh, over there, is to turn on uh, the inertial tensor um, you may have to play around and have it on for the hinge, off for the rotor, or a uh, combination. Sometimes they don't like to turn uh, in certain axes when you've got the um, 
uh, inertia tensor on, but uh, shared, but it, it can help that at least uh, I've found to be very effective with the elevation aspect. The uh, azimuth aspect, uh, or uh, panning with the camera, you would say, um, I have this space ball here. And this space ball has actually helped to balance out the weight of those three quite heavy rail guns there. Um, and I think I've got 10 tons uh, of virtual mass for that there. Uh, so that's just a little tip to help to, uh, you know. And also I have raised, so as you can see here, additionally, I've also raised the torque right up and I've raised the braking torque right up. Um, this seems to be a reasonably good combination, although there is a little bit of wobble. It's much more um, like this instead of, uh, sorry for the viewers, uh, your, your brains then. Um, yeah, so that, that's definitely something I'd recommend trying, having a balanced turret if you are using a large grid weapons array. It'll help a lot getting, in, getting those guns on target. Now over here, you can see I've got these side turrets mounted in uh, quite a tight position, and we're gonna come to that. And what happens if you don't uh, allow some rotor space? I've got the rotor just placed here pretty well to its maximum, and that's over clearance for a fresh ship, but uh, it's to allow clearance for distortion in both the armor at the back there on the hull and the armor in the, on the back of the turret. Even though I have tried to raise it up, there is a flaw with my design here, and this block uh, holds that weapon array and I just was too lazy to swap it out for a thinner um, set of blocks. Also though, the thinner set of blocks would have a lower um, durability, so there is that. Uh, yeah, now talking about that, one large artillery hit right on that hinge is going to dislodge your turret. That's um, pretty well a certainty. Uh, at least the weapon system will go off into space. Okay, so before we go and check out the jamming, I'd just also like to cover why it's probably not a good idea to put turrets right, uh, custom turrets, right at the front of your ship. Now, this is quite a mean weapon setup and uh, it can deliver some pain, as you can see uh, coming up now. But uh, as you can also see, it, it got a one shot. It literally got to fire those front guns once and then they were destroyed. Now that's primarily for two reasons. One, static meta at the front, um, but also it's a very vulnerable position from a number of, a, a, a wider range of angles and the nose of the ship is more inclined to, to take that fire um, as, as you're manoeuvring uh, to try to stay near your target. So uh, it, it, as you saw, they just come straight off and they're not very far behind this artillery set up here. And the same goes for those side turrets. If I was to move these side turrets up at all um, to about here or here, you're gonna end up with a similar problem where a shot can come right down and hit it down there, take out these things, hit that poorly armored camera setup, and I, I should really fix that for the tournament, uh, and and basically ruin your turret, take out the rotor or dislo and dislodge it, or at least damage the rotor and leave you with a, uh, a point and shoot weapon that could be pointing in a random direction. So, you know, hard to use. Um, now finally, you can see over here, I've come to the same arrangement as that ship, just stripped down the armor. This is the competition ship uh, for uh, the battleship, uh, sorry, for the Battletop uh, Space Engineers uh, tournament coming up uh, on Saturday uh, in this recording. Uh, I think it's the 5th of March. Um, you can catch that uh, on uh, Battleship Colorado's Twitch channel, link below, and the recording of the fights and the after hours videos on this channel. Um, and I will link them uh, in a card in the corner once they're out. So, that obviously has less custom weapons than that, if I'd had the side ones as well, right? And you would think that would be more effective, but I feel that it's definitely not worthwhile to have a custom turret at the front, um, as well as one mounted. I mean, I could do that, but 
this is just going to be lost quickly and these turrets can take more hits before they leave the body of the ship. It's just as simple as that. Anyway, let's go and uh, check out that footage and um, enjoy, the, enjoy a fight. Okay, so here we are. And first I just want to cover the uh, top turrets and getting them on point. So the inertia tensors and, uh, and how that helps. And as you can see, that thing's just wobbling around up and down, left and right. And here we go. We're probably gonna miss these shots. Well, wasn't looking. I mean, he's still got the shots on there, but if I'd have taken those shots early then, it would have completely missed. And I'm not really sure why it didn't take the shots early then, but it didn't, so, you know, whatever. Um, I'm gonna come back around and overshoot and almost run into the base. Uh, I'll just quickly um, jump forward and uh, show you changing the settings. So I'm going to switch on the inertia tensor on both the uh, dorsal and ventral hinges and the dorsal and ventral rotors. And then I'm gonna take another pass. Let's hop forward to that. Okay, here I am coming in and my weapons aren't turning. They, well, they're turning, but they're fixed in that location on the azimuth. And when they fire, of course, they weren't tracking. They were stuck in some sort of clang induced location. So I uh, quickly turn them off here and come back for another pass. You really can get some odd results with inertia tensor. Okay, coming back in and I have that switched off. So now the turret should swing and shoot at the enemy. And there we go. Now it's still quite loose on that uh, azimuth axis, but it is rock solid on the elevation and that is much more helpful. If you were to combine that with the weight at the back like I have here, you'll see I get much more, um, a, a shorter time to target uh, for the uh, ventral and dorsal turrets there. But here I'm actually going to be showing you a um, nice shot top turret, uh, <laughs> dorsal turret. Uh, here I'm going to be showing you the problem to do with fitting in tight spaces. You can see I've got the small turrets there and actually if you've got a good eye you will have noticed that the PD on the uh, enemy ship was targeting the small turrets and that's because it's set to target small grids as well so you can actually get your PD to be a little bit more useful um, although that could be distracting. Anyhow, I'm going to come in, take a couple of passes, and uh, you will see that my side turrets, while not destroyed completely, um, aren't really functioning. Here I am coming in, expose the other side, and yep, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's not working, baby. Now why isn't it working? Because it's still there, but it's pointing in the wrong direction. And that is what I'm talking about. The turret has jammed up because of deformation, as you can see here, with the turret body and the tight fitting. In this case, it wasn't the back. The other side was the back. In this case, it was the armor. You can see the extra armor plate is pushing up against the deformed rear of the turret. And that is inducing a phantom force, as you can see there. Now I hopped in and lifted that displacement in the end all the way up and it stopped the phantom forces. So I go in for another try and we will see what happens. Okie dokie, here I am encroaching and bottom cannon, top cannon, so ventral, dorsal and my starboard cannon uh, does appear that the uh, port cannon, which is now broken after that barrage, uh, was still jammed though. So didn't fix the jamming there. Bit of a problem. And this may, may or may not be mayonnaise to you. I'm oh, sorry, a concern to you. But um, if you're looking for longevity in your fights, uh, it probably is gonna be a worry. So coming back on another swing. So 
see it's much less uh, deviation in that top turret wobble too. The uh, starboard turret is still pointing in the right direction, it seems, but failed to fire. Now as you can see, I've uh, pulled away to have a look and there is definite strong deformation, of course a broken elevator hinge. And uh, yep, uh, there goes the uh, starboard uh, turret's weapon array, CN8. Have fun out there. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 glass cannons, uh, yeah, evidence of, of glass cannons there. Yeah. Uh, so, right, now the top turrets, uh, whilst being harder to get on target, are slightly slower and running a higher risk of missing and a lower rate of fire. They do do slightly more damage and they are slightly more durable. Well, maybe a lot more durable, I might say. Anyway, I do really still think they are worth the effort to make. They have an edge on the uh, normal turrets and definitely do have a place in the game. Plus, it makes some pretty cool cranes out of them. And if uh, you want to see any of those, hit me up down below and I'll make a video about it. There is some good stuff already out there though. Um, anyway, look, that's enough of that. Let's go have a look at how this uh, ship and the custom turrets fight um, when everything is optimized and working smoothly least as best he can on this poor ship. She had the shop button out of her. Let's get to it.
Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop a uh, thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you like the video. And I will catch you next time. Peace out. Fly safe. Have fun.